On this episode of the Nathan Markley Show, I talk about WannaCry, a new virus called Peta and why you should be worried, nine reasons why you should switch from Chrome to Firefox, and the Ghost Goats is going to start studying cybersecurity. All that and more coming up. Hello and welcome to the Nathan Markley Show. And now your host, Nathan Markley. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Nathan Markley Show. I'm Nathan Markley, your host, and today, let's get right to some technology news. First off, uh, as many of you probably know already, uh, there's a ransomware going around uh, about a few weeks ago, and now it's called WannaCry. And WannaCry, I think I mentioned this. Maybe I mentioned it in a different episode on another podcast. WannaCry is ransomware. And what ransomware is, as I mentioned in episode 40 in Internet Safety, is malware, a virus that gets on your computer and and it encrypts all your files and to get your files back to decrypt it uh, when like a window comes up a pop-up says all your files have been encrypted and to get it back uh pay certain much a uh, bitcoin or whatever usually it's in the hundreds of thousands of dollars well uh, i don't recommend anyone paying um this ransom that's why I always say use a backup, back up your system. So if something does happen, you can just reformat the computer and restore for a backup, a good backup before the ransomware. And this way you don't have to worry about it. And if we don't pay, people, these bad guys, hackers, uh, will get the idea that we um, not take. Not, we're not gonna, they, they don't win because when you pay to get the encryption key to uh, decrypt your files from them uh, the bad guys win and that's what they want you know they want to win and so us not paying we uh, we win you know we say yeah you're not winning anyway so it was why not cry uh, as a form of ransomware that got leaked by WikiLeaks, and it's made by the NSA, they use, according to sources, and the, it, it targeted systems that had, like, Windows XP, Windows ME, um, Windows 7, but, like, versions of Windows 7 that uh, never been updated, so your computer systems that you don't if you don't update your system the chances of you getting one quite are higher than the ones that you do update your systems well microsoft did do a patch for one and the, there was um because it's an exploit that how wild cry became into effect right so it makes her fix the, the the exploit but Many systems haven't uh, upgraded their systems because uh, there's actually a lot of like a lot of healthcare systems that still run at Windows XP because of the downtime and how much money it will cost to uh, upgrade it to Windows Seven or Windows Ten. Like for instance, so uh, WannaCry was fixed, but. Like a lot of countries, like in another country or uh, down south, uh, got hit with WannaCry. And we thought WannaCry was dead. But according to hackernews.com, uh, they got reports that WannaCry is not dead. And WannaCry actually hit a well known uh, car manufacturer, uh, Honda. Honda has a computer systems that are running on, let's see if we can get what Opera system is. I want to say it's XP because that's a well-known a lot of companies use. And let's see, Honda. So Honda got one request to stop production after the computer crashed and they realized they got it. And... 
I'm going to read a little blurb from Hacker News. That this link will be in the show notes, as always. So, Honda Motor Company released a statement uh, last week saying the company was forced to halt its production for more than 24 hours at one of its Japan-based factories after finding a wanna cry affection on its computer network. Now, that the businesses, like, your computers are networked together. So, if one computer gets wanna cry, chances of all your computers are getting it are very high because they're networked. So, what wanna cry does is it encrypts one file computer and one computer with files and then it goes to the next one and then we have network files with network drives it goes to those and it's just a, a domino effect so again that's why I said back up everything the automaker halted production of more than a thousand of its Samaria plant northwest of Tokyo on the 19th of June after it discovered that the ransomware had affected networks across Japan, North America, Europe, China, and other regions despite its efforts to secure systems in mid-May according to Wednesday report from Redditors. Uh, Honda did not say how WannaCry got into the network 37 days after the resource activated the kill switch. So resources um, saw that WannaCry was in the system and they have a kill switch that shuts down all production. It's clear that the computers inside Honda network were running unsupported versions of Windows OS, so probably Windows XP because Windows XP is now unsupported. There's no more updates. And... Yeah, and it did not highly update the Crusoe release for Microsoft in March, because March is when um, Microsoft released these uh, Crusoe updates. So if you haven't updated your Windows computer, go ahead and update it. Like I always say you need to update your systems, even though you don't want to or uh, make changes, because these updates, especially the Crusoe updates on Windows, they fix things like this. They patch holes. the patch back doors that want to acquire different hackers can get into your computer system, your network, and it will prevent something like this from happening. So always back back up your system, always update your system. Uh, also, in Australia, WannaCry hits 55 traffic light and speed cameras. Oh, this is... The malware locked down crucial files and demand a ransom. In return, WannaCry usually demands $300 to unlock files, according to the 3AW morning radio show. A system patch has been applied which prevents the spread of viruses. The officials told the show the department in eight, in the process of removing the WannaCry virus from the affected cameras. The remaining websites will be certified in the next couple of days. Uh, the authorities believe the infections was a result of a targeted cyber attack rather than human error, likely of a part of a camera technician and that I want to quite go on board via USB drive. Now, that's the other thing. USB drives are very uh, vulnerable. Now, you would say, Nathan, we use USB, USB drives every day. I mean, yes, we do. And they're very good for transporting files. And that's why it's vulnerable, because... If you find a USB drive, like out in public, whatever, I say don't use it because you never know what's on there. Like someone probably put a virus, as probably according to this article might have did, and like want to cry or crypto lock or another virus or malware or key log or, or something that gives the bad guy, the hacker, access to your computer back door. And then once they get access to it, you know, they can do stuff like make your computer do crazy stuff or upload files, do your data, watch what you're doing. So as an IT person in a field, working in an IT department, I'm very concerned about people using USB drives and where they get them. And... Most IT departments, especially in the healthcare industry, they would disable the USB drive. Like, the just USB ports, like, you can't use USB drive because of this instance. And if you need to put something on it, you 
you have to go to the IT department, allow them to like to have to scan the USB drive, or maybe like use a CD, or use like Dropbox or something like that. Uh, or maybe well, they would use Dropbox. They probably they have, probably have a better file encryption sharing software. Uh, but they have other methods that um, you can put. But because you can in USB drive, once you like input. Once you put this virus or the, the USB drive in your computer, there's a virus on it. It can you can make it so it's automatically executed in the background, and like auto on, and it'll just you never know it was there. You know, it could be disguised as a PDF or something, or a Microsoft Excel document or what, or whatever. So that's another be careful when you use USB drives. Uh, if you find a USB drive on the street or laying outside your office or whatever, be careful. Don't uh, don't put it into a computer that you don't want to get lost. Uh, but maybe if you have a secondary computer, bring it to your ID to put IT to IT department. Wow, to uh, look into that. Yeah. So, my request still out there. Be careful with that, and just uh, make sure you have an antivirus. And uh, you know, antivirus is not really—it's good protection, but it's not great. Uh, as we see, there's a lot of stuff going on. But also, update your systems. You know, and check with the IT department. Make sure your systems are being updated, and talk to them and tell them that you. Um, you uh, you know about the stuff, and you want to make sure your computer, your network is safe. Another um, virus that another like ransomware was well, really not ransomware. It's disguised as ransomware, but really you can't get your files back. It's uh, called Peta, and FedEx actually um, got Peta. <laughs> All these big companies, you know, we're seeing a lot of these lately, and we're going to see more and more. So FedEx has suspended suspended trading of its shares on the New York Exchange after admitting its subsidiary TNT Express has been hit by an information system virus. The big package giant said no information had been stolen by the cyber nasty in <laughs> cyber nasty. That's awesome. And only some offices of TNT Express appear to have been disrupted, distrib- disrupted. After yesterday's global peta outbreak, not peta outbreak, it will be logical to assume the fire screaming, uh, Bastard Weir was claimed another victim. FedEx isn't responding to requests for comment. So, okay, so I guess it was Fed, that's right, FedEx bought TNT Express, so their company uh, got uh, PETA. If the problem is not PETA, then FedEx wouldn't be the first transport company to get hit. Container ship giant Merzrak, which controls 16 cent per 16% of the world's cargo shipping reported its service and terminals have been blocked by malware, sparking fears on a non face of knock on problems in this global supply giant. Okay. So, Peta, from doing my research, well, I can tell you about Peta, P E T Y A. I think that's Pet, yeah. I think that's how you pronounce it. It looks like it's more of a destruction than uh, um, just encrypt your files or pay to get your uh, like ransomware, or like a destruction virus that encrypts your files, but you you can't really get your files back. Even you can pay all the money you want, but you won't get the encryption key back. So pretty much, you can pay uh, you, if you don't have a backup. You know, you can lose money from if this company gets. You know, if you get if you get it, if a company you get peta, you can lose money. You can the company can go down, all this other stuff because you you won't get your files back. Again, another reason why you need a backup. Why am I telling you about this? Why did I start off with uh, this ransomware, these viruses? Because I I can't stress enough how much internet safety and cybersecurity is nowadays, and 
really, I want to educate you guys on this so you guys know what's going on. You know what to watch for and look for. And I... And it's very interesting, you know, not just, I don't want to scare you because, it, like I said, the internet is a, a fun place to be, you know, but there is bad stuff going on. It's just, the internet's like being on the streets. If you're in New York City, if, it's in, if you're in Providence, if you're in Chicago, if you're in LA, you know, it, it, it's, it, the internet is great, but it's also this bad stuff going on. You know, we have tradings, you have illegal stuff, illegal stuff, activity going on. But <sighs> what I want to get at is to educate you guys what's going on. Is know what you look for and also just be careful and back up your systems. Back up so you do get a virus and you do get with this ransomware or any ransomware that you, you, you don't care uh, the files because you have a backup. You can just reformat the computer and just use the backup from the previous month or whatever before you got the ransomware. Also, do get an antivirus. Get a good one. Don't get McAfee or um, Norton or Symantec. Get something like uh, Bitdefender or um, Webru or Viper. The reason I say don't get McAfee or Norton because McAfee and Norton is very, very heavy program. It has a lot of stuff. It uses a lot of computer resources and I've seen computers, new computers that have not in a McAfee that just slow down. And once I remove not in a McAfee and put like Webroot or Bitdefender or Viper on it, the computers sped up faster, you know? And I don't like the way it is, you know? It, it is politics, but I mean, I've seen because I've seen new computers, brand new computers, a two days old, a week old, that's like, my computer is slow, what's going on? I'm like, well, you have Norton on there, or you have McAfee on there, let's remove that and put like, uh, Windows Essentials, uh, because when Microsoft came out with antivirus, Windows Essentials, uh, I think it's called something different now, uh, Security Essentials or whatever, and it's really good, or uh, put Viper if you want to pay for it, or Viper, or Bitdefender, even Bitdefender is getting heavy, but still, uh, oh, ESET, uh, non 32 is a good one. And it sped up the computer. Your computer's faster. So you don't need that memory hog stuff. But yeah, so again, very important. Uh, speaking of cybersecurity, uh, this is pretty cool. That I saw the Girl Scouts is going to have... Um, cybersecurity badges. So I think that's because so Girl Scouts are going to start studying cybersecurity, and they can earn badges on it. And so, as you know, Girl Scouts is best known for the cookies. Real cookies, not the ones stored on your browser. <laughs> I like that. I like how they did this article. This is this is uh, from nakedsecurity.sophos.com. So Sophos is an antivirus company. Sophos is another good um, antivirus, too. So the Girl Scouts will soon be able to add another badge to the ones that are already on for skills ranging from first state to storytelling, uh, a badge for cybersecurity skills, according to CNN Tech. According to the Girl Scouts CEO, the badges came from the girls themselves. Young girls wanted to know how to make sure they don't get bullied online. Older girls wanted to know how to prevent cyber attacks, she added. Very, very good idea. Um, you know, the, the CEO of tech recognized that the, our increasingly tech-driven world, future generations must propose the skills to navigate the complexities and inherent challenges of the cyber realm. The badge programmes are being developed in partnership with Plato or Plato Auto Networks, a security company, and it is welcome part of the wider move in the tech industry to encourage girls and young women to think about careers in security technology. That's awesome. Um, 
I actually have to read this article in the Aubrey Nathan podcast because, as you know, the Aubrey Nathan podcast, we tend to motivate others to do what they love and try to get, you know, well, we, me and Aubrey like to do programming and stuff, and I was just say it would be nice to see more girls in the technology field. Uh, also, you know, it, it's good to educate this. I like the idea that the Girl Scouts... Um, are educated from a cyber security and how they get to teach them like recognize when you're being bullied online because cyber bullying is the number one issue especially um, in girls uh, I've seen studies I've seen I've seen stuff that you wouldn't believe happen uh, to girls that be cyber bullied uh, you know and the uh, it's just amazing. I mean, the internet is, like I say, it's a nice place, and sometimes people don't feel safe on the internet because it's easy to hide and to change your identity and to talk about someone than it is to in person. And um, to prevent cyber attacks, you know, to help them to get more people in the technology and the cyber and it is like I said cyber code is a growing industry and the more and more people that we educate and come on and I think um, this is a good thing you know uh, if the course coach of Rhode Island want someone to help them teach the classes you should contact me because I am Rhode Island's tech geek and this is my major and this is something I really love cyber security so I'll be more than happy to help you guys out so if anyone knows uh, a way to get contact with Girl Scouts of Rhode Island I probably have contact too because my sister my mom was in Girl Scouts but uh, I'll be more than happy to help you guys out even to help with the um Great programs. Even though this company is pretty good, that's helping. But yeah. All right. Last tech news for the week. Uh. Okay. So this article made me realize that I need to start using Firefox more. Until today, literally until today. Until today is Wednesday, July fifth, and I'm like, yeah, I can't use Firefox anymore. So this article from makeuseof.com it says nine reasons to switch from Chrome to Firefox okay well number one is Firefox is better on battery life that is true like I was using Firefox for two weeks straight and my battery life definitely increased than using Chrome and the reason for that is Chrome uses more CPU usage than Firefox so more CPU means less battery life because the bat the CPU is more processing and um the, it takes more battery power to do CPU performance. But with the CPU you know you uh, when you use more CPU process it means it's faster in a way because it uses more RAM. And we'll get to that in a second. Number two, Firefox is better for tab heavy users. Uh, eh. so okay, I guess this is where we get for RAM. <sighs> How can I? So, Chrome uses less RAM than Firefox when you don't have many tabs open, and Firefox scales much better than Chrome once you reach about eight tabs or so. Now, if you're a power user like me, like you have like 20 plus tabs open, Firefox wins. And that that is true, you know. Because I noticed when I was doing research, I had about 10 tabs open. And I was using about 437 megabits of RAM. And in Chrome, at 10 tabs, I had 533 megabits of RAM. Now... It's about not too much difference, but it's still different. But the reason why Chrome uses more RAM is because at each tab is like your own internet browser, and it, so this goes to number three. You know, Chrome 
Como as you know Como as so Como started being um more of an OS like an application than a browser and Firefox is just a browser and he knows that so Chrome is not the speedy beast it was in 2011 today Chrome is some sort of weird ass application platform that just happens to also be a browser because you could do everything you could do in the uh, OS you could probably do in Chrome as you know Google Chrome OS Chromebooks and so each individual tab it's also like a browser it's an application there's a small RAM and, and it's just slowing down your computer and then you start slowing down and it crashes or whatever Firefox is a browser and they can scale and also as I mentioned Firefox is a non-profit so they have um, they, 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 Firefox is more against it to like a open source um, more privacy and um, more of a user base you know um, and since Firefox embraces the open source mindset It's like a complete. Uh, they have the public roadmap, you know, so they they influence on contributors and community members to help them make Chrome better and fix issues and bugs, and I don't know. But you know, as using Chrome, I started noticing that YouTube videos and Facebook videos started to. Have audio sync issues, <laughs> meaning the video will stop playing, but the audio will continue to play. And I just got fed up with it, and I switched back to Chrome. And I can and Chrome, yes, Chrome is faster in tabs and loading stuff and videos. But when it comes to watching videos, even Netflix, Chrome is better. So give it a shot. Just I want to. Pretty much why I mentioned this is I want to tell you about Firefox, you know, and there's some interesting reason why you should use Firefox. I do have Firefox still on my MacBook Pro, and I do like it. I like how Firefox like, has this um, privacy thing. They have a new podcast. I think it's called... I don't know. Let me see if I can find... I don't know the name of the, the um, Firefox podcast... But it's um it, it talks about privacy and security issues and the big for net neutrality and the support net neutrality. But also, you know, Chrome isn't it is Chrome is based off of the Chromium project. But I think Google Google treats it as a closed product so it's more their own instead of an open source and I think that's where it got stuck you know the, the quote, Google made Chrome into an OS than a browser and it's heavy and it's starting to be heavy and people are noticing it and I don't know until until the video issues to work out Firefox and I'm going to wait to Firefox and see if we can figure this out maybe they did something wrong with my computer uh uh, I'm going to keep using Firefox. I'm going to use both. I use both Chrome and Firefox, but I would love to use Firefox all the time. I and mean, Firefox is good, but I agree with this person. Chrome does, it's not what it used to be. And yeah, it definitely needs to be fixed. You know, the good thing too is um, Firefox does support Chrome extensions. So, starting with, what was it, Firefox 48, uh, Mozilla declared stable support for web extensions, and web extension is a cross-browser API that allows developers to create extensions once and have them work in multiple browsers. With web extensions, Firefox can install Chrome extensions. So, if you need extension that you had at Chrome, and you use the Firefox now, you can do that now. Uh, but I think people are starting to make extensions for Firefox too. I do see more and more people with Firefox. And Firefox should do a Chrome 
what was to do with Kum Kian mostly, yeah. Uh, you know, and it's a browser, you know, they're both, and the reason this the difference between Firefox and Chrome is minor, as this person says. One might be slightly faster and use less battery, but in terms of usability, they're both excellent. I agree. You know, I've, got, I've noticed, like, the only issue I had with Firefox this past week or two weeks is that um, video. YouTube video, Facebook video, Netflix, Amazon. I have audio sync issue in Firefox. And I don't have that in Chrome. And I can't tell if it's memory. I don't know why would it be memory. I mean, I have 16 gigs of in here. And I think I have 16. I put it have 16 gigs. Yeah, I have 16 gigs of memory. And so I have plenty. But lately, ever since I use Firefox, the video's audio sync issues is terrible. You know, and you with both of them, you have um, you can synchronize the tabs and bookmarks and profiles across all your devices in both Chrome and Firefox. So, and when it comes down to it, it's more personal choice. If you're a developer, Chrome is better because Chrome has a develop a better developer console than Firefox, and I've used. Firefox developer console. I've used it to check out websites and develop stuff and to play around with it. And I found that it's very hard to use and hard to get to the Chrome. But, yeah, what do you guys think? Do you use Chrome? Do you use Firefox? Do you use another browser? Don't tell me you use IE because if you are, if you use IE or Microsoft Edge, get off there. Download Chrome or Firefox. Actually, download Firefox. But yeah, tell me what you uh, guys use and what you think of Firefox or Chrome. I'd love to know what you guys uh, think about it. Also, I would like let's have a discussion let's have a conversation uh, in the chat of thenathanmarkinsville.com or Facebook or use the hashtag hashtag the Nathan Markley show on Twitter and let me know what you think of Firefox and Chrome or what you use so let's have a conversation about it yeah so this article also says when is Chrome better than Firefox well, if you have Chromecast, you can cast um, your tabs and stuff. Like, and they even said advanced web development is often easy in Chrome. Chrome prioritizes powers and simplifies over freedom, making it easier for us to use for those who aren't tech savvy. Mm. I'm gonna leave this link in the show notes because it says when are you ready to make the switch? And there's different stuff to talk about about that. But yeah, wow, 30 minutes, uh, this is good, I hope you guys like this kind of uh, episode, talk about technology news, uh, I do want to mention that this episode of the Nathan Markley Show was brought to you by Patreon.com, well actually it's brought to you by all the patrons of Patreon.com, and if you want to support the podcast, you too can become a patron, all you have to do is visit Patreon.com slash the Nathan Markley Show, and uh, you can become a patron as little as two dollars a month. That's a good cup of coffee, and if you can live without one day a month without getting a cup of coffee, pledge uh, support become a patron for the two dollar month, and you get access to all Patreon content, weekly and monthly updates. You get to connect with other patrons, and we get to you know I might give you updates. I might give you uh. Polls, you know, you guys will help me. You guys will help me become, make the podcast into something more. I, right? because I do want to build the podcast. I do want to make this into a podcast network, and I want to have fun with it. You know, so visit patreon.com slash the Nathan Markley. So, um, I mean, there's um for three dollars a month, uh, or more. It's like uh, your I will follow you, the Nathan Markley at the Nathan Markley show. So social media follow I put as the tier. So from all my social media accounts from the Nathan Markley show, I will follow you. Plus you get all the lower 
tiers uh, for five dollars a month you get behind the scenes live stream so as i'm recording the podcast you get to watch me record and help me uh, chat with me in the chat room as i'm recording so you get to know what's going on and listen to the podcast and pretty much help me uh, build that next episode of the podcast each time for ten dollars a month, you get to join my team. You get access to my Google Docs show notes. You help can help me uh, find content about each episode. Collaborate, collaborate with uh, on the Google Docs sheet, and of course, um, you get to watch the live stream. So, ten dollars a month, you get access. You can see what I have to talk about what other people want me to talk about. Of course, I have the final say of what I'm going to talk about this episode or not, but pretty much if you want me to talk about something, I'll talk about it. It has to be technology news because right now the Nathan Markley show is all about technology and it might be about my life too, but technology stuff. And for $20 a month, your name is in the credits. I will actually say your name at the end of the episode, each episode. So if I have 20 people, who at the twenty dollar level, I will say your name at the end of the credits of the episode. So I'll say um, thank you to whoever, and I'll list your name. So that's twenty dollars a month. So go check it out, patreoncom slash the Nathan Marcus Show. And I mean, there's different goals. So each time we reach a goal, uh, more stuff gets to happen in the podcast. Like the n- number one goal is five hundred dollars a month. With five hundred dollars a month, I'm able to keep going on the podcast. I will help pay for audio f- hosting files. Help pay for website hosting. I use Lipson for the host of my podcast. Also, I do plan on taking this one day a week podcast to three days a week so the more people support this podcast and support me creating the Nathan Markley so I'll be able to do one day instead of one day a week do it three days a week and I it'll open up like do it three days a week or open up opportunities like I talk more about technology news uh, so you don't, you don't have to wait in the middle of the week for technology news which may be a week old news it'll be like couple days old also I can have guests on I can bring experts in the field to have deeper conversations about certain topics that you guys want me to talk about and we talk about World Wide Web and eventually like I said I'm going to create a podcast network I can add create more shows into the Nathan Marcus Show podcast network because that's my ultimate plan is I want to create a podcast network I want to have fun with the Nathan Marcus Show but I can't do it without you guys help um, and for you guys to help me to support the podcast Patreon is a great and awesome platform for it and even if you can't um, support me in Patreon just by listening to the show and have a conversation with me leaving a review on Apple Podcast rating tell your friends and family about the show uh, is a, a great support too I mean I don't want you guys to give the podcast money. I don't want you to support the podcast if you can't. So if you don't have the money to support it, don't feel hesitant to support it. Don't give money if you can't. Um, just listen to the podcast. Just you by listening, you by downloading my show is more than enough support for me. But this what Patreon is a way for me to reach out to those who can and who want to support more than just listening and sharing the podcast. I hope you guys understand that. So, yeah. So, if you want to become a patron today, visit patreon.com. So, that's the Nathan Markley. So, okay. That's um, enough talk about advertising for the show. And uh, <laughs> you guys probably annoyed with me because I know I don't like when people do that. But I mean, I am an independent creator. All right, guys. Uh, that would do it. Thank you again for watching. Watch well. Thank you again for listening to the Nathan Marcus. So hope you enjoyed this episode. I will talk to you all next week. Hopefully some of you will be in the live stream or helping me with the Google Docs. And until then, peace. Good night. Don't the bed bugs bite. Bye, guys.